and may his thrice memory be eternal. Before I begin my sermon this morning, I want to ask you a very important question. Is there ever a time in your life when you felt like life has thrown way more at you than you're able to handle? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Have you ever felt like life has given you way more than you could possibly handle? I know that for myself, I've often felt that way. And this year, for sure, has been no exception. Sometimes, it feels as if the load that we're carrying is way more than we can possibly ever bear. Balancing our lives, including work, and including family, including children if we have them, everything we have to deal with at home, the relationships that we engage in, our friends, school, coordinating vacations, possibly, and hopefully incorporating church into our life, can all be tremendously overwhelming, can't it? And it may even feel impossible to continue on sometimes. And sometimes we may even find ourselves in prayer asking God to lighten that load for us and to reduce the amount of burdens that we may be carrying at any given moment in time. But in the Gospel lesson this morning, which is the same Gospel that we hear each and every Sunday, third Sunday of Great and Holy Lent, we hear Christ say, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Jesus said this to his disciples immediately after the Apostle Peter, in Scripture, expressed for the first time that Jesus was truly the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. In Matthew's Gospel, it records, he records that Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. But also, this statement to deny ourselves and to pick up our cross comes right after Jesus introduces a different, more serious tone into his ministry by revealing that he will soon suffer many things and be rejected, it says in Scripture, and be killed, he told his apostles. But then promising that he will surely rise again. And so this morning, I want to reflect on what it means for us Christians to deny ourselves and to take up our cross and to follow Christ. A couple years ago, I saw a cartoon illustration that was a great reminder to me of the importance of what Christ intended for us when he told his disciples to take up their crosses and follow him. The cartoon showed a young man walking across what it seemed like an empty desert. And he was with a small group of other people. And they were all carrying large, heavy wooden crosses over their shoulders, struggling with every step that they took. And this particular young man was at the very back of the group in the cartoon, really having a hard time carrying his cross and struggling. Then at one point, along the way, the, car the cartoon strip shows this young man stopping dead in his tracks, setting his cross down on the ground, and pulling out a large knife. Then he lifts his, his uh, eyes and his head towards heaven, speaking to God, saying, Lord, 
It's too heavy. Please, cut it down a little bit for me. Then it shows the man bending down over the cross and cutting off a large chunk of wood from the bottom of that cross. And then the next frame in the cartoon shows the man back in the crowd. But now his cross was a little smaller than everybody else's and was a little lighter. And he had moved up within the crowd to about the middle, the cartoon shows. But he was still struggling, you could tell. So again, the young man stopped. He put down his cross, he pulled out that same knife, he lifted his eyes towards heaven, and this time he said, Lord, please cut it down a little more. Then I'll be able to carry it better. And again, the young man bends down over the cross and cuts off a large chunk from the bottom. And then he picked up the cross again, put it over his shoulder, and the next frame in the cartoon strip shows him with a huge smile on his face, looking up to God and saying, Thank you so much, Lord, for lightening my load. And then the next frame shows the young man back in the crowd with all those people carrying their crosses. But now his cross was way smaller and way lighter than everybody else. And it shows him at the front of the group, skipping along, barely struggling at all, with enough breath available that he could even whistle his favorite tune and show little notes above his head. All the while, while the others behind him were still struggling and carrying those big heavy crosses over their shoulders. But then it shows this man coming to a large gap in the desert floor. And it shows him looking at the other side, across that empty chalice, chasm, and wondering how he could possibly ever get across so that he could, could, could continue on his journey. Then it shows the other people in the cartoon strip catching up with him at the gap and saying to, the, to each other, let's use our crosses as a bridge and pass over to the other side. And it shows them all making it safely to the other side and continuing on their way. But when this young man in this cartoon, who had cut down his cross so much, went to use his cross as a bridge, he found that it was way too short now to reach from one side to the other. And the cartoon strip ends with this young man on his knees, at the foot of his cross, with his head down, realizing the error of his reasoning and the error of his prayer. And the caption read this, we complain about the cross that we bear, but we don't realize that it is possibly preparing us for the dips in the roads that God can see, but we can't. God promises a safe landing, but never promised a calm passage. In the book called The Lenten Spring, which was written by a priest, a professor at St. Vladimir Seminary and a contemporary scholar, Father Thomas Hopko, which is a great book to reflect on during Lent, The Lenten Spring, he reminds us that when Christ says to us, deny yourself, he, may, he means to give up our bad habits, to lose those things that are rooted in our heart that tie us to this world, and avoid the desire to do the things that we do out of self-love, but that we are to do everything out of love for God. And Father Hopko goes on in his book to remind us of what St. Paul says in Scripture about denying ourselves and following Christ. St. Paul says in the sixth chapter of Romans, that's read at every Orthodox baptism service, that to deny oneself means not only to be dead to sin, but also alive to Christ. And he says that the way of Christ is the way to God. The way of Christ is the way to God. And that the way to God is nothing less than freedom from sin. St. Paul says in Romans, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, then we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
And later, that if we are dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over Him. So reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we hear that read at every single baptism service. So the way of Christ, the way to follow Christ, like he commands us today in gospel, can be none other than the way of the cross. Because the way of the cross is the way to eternal life. And eternal life is nothing less than living in the eternal presence of God in his heavenly kingdom. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue on our Lenten journey, let us receive with joy the words that we heard from Christ in the Gospel lesson this morning. To deny ourselves, to pick up our cross, and to follow Him. Let us receive those words with joy. And let us also re receive with joy all the things that are given to us in this life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Being assured that all is sent to us from God. Not for our worldly damnation, but in order for us to be equipped and prepared for when we may encounter gaps or dips that appear in our way as we navigate this path of life. Knowing and trusting that God always is with us, loving us, and guiding us, and preparing us for the day when, just like we heard at the end of the Gospel lesson this, this morning, a few moments ago, we truly will see the Kingdom of God present with power. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help us.